Hi everyone, I'm Suzanne Mulligan and I'm here with Karina Bauer. Karina, I have to say, I did think by now we'd be back together filming these live in our office, but I know that we will be together soon. I know especially now it feels like the world, our industry and IMEX are making some really big changes. But one thing we're sticking to is our yearly kickoff interview with you. However, we have made one change. Rather than announcing a new talking point for 2021, we're putting a topical twist on our existing 2020 theme of nature and looking to a far horizon anchored by hope as we set out our 12 commitments for the year. Karina, 12 commitments feels like a lot of commitments. In fact, there were so many commitments that we had to break this interview into two parts. Why was it so important to you and the IMEX team to share 12, especially right now as the world feels a little bit upside down? Um, first of all, you know, we want to set out our intentions for the year, you know, starting the year with the cancellation of a show was obviously tough for us as a business, um, but also tough for the industry as well. But we did say in that statement that we have a lot of hope and confidence um, for the future of our industry. And we as a team are working very hard towards that um, positive future. And within that, we really wanted to set out what we're going to be working on this year, give the industry something to focus on each and each month as well that is um that is useful now but also going to help us in the future um, and we also wanted to find a way to really um support and collaborate with all our partners right across the world and i think having these 12 commitments and when we um showcase them will really give us that opportunity to provide that platform for everybody that we work with across the industry and, and help us to elevate them as well and so that was really important to us Absolutely. Let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the commitments. Um, obviously, earlier this month, we announced the cancellation of IMAX in Frankfurt. But as you said then, and we continue to say now, the green shoots are showing and the team is currently working towards a successful live IMAX America. And so we're moving forward. What does that look like at IMAX? Yeah, so, you know, the whole team is very energized, actually, at the moment, working very hard. And our primary objective, obviously, is our live shows, IMEX America in November, and then IMEX in Frankfurt come 2022. And so, you know, we're very focused on being able to put together um, a safe and successful, but also a fun live show. And I think, you know, we put in that statement as well that, you um, you know, you can count on IMEX that when we do put on a live show, it's going to be one worth waiting for. And we really mean that. And so we're really looking at every single aspect of the shows, how to make them safe, how to make them successful, make sure that people get the ROI they need, but also how to make them a really great experience. I think all of us in the event industry need to be aware that you know, in creating safe environments, they mustn't be sterile environments. We create experiences and we really need to um, focus on that. Um, you know, also during this year and during last year, we've been involved in a lot of the advocacy efforts here in the UK and more broadly in the industry. So we, we will continue to support those efforts in every single way we can. And we'll be doing more of that during the year. We obviously have a policy forum usually in Frankfurt. So we will be um, focusing on that later in the year as well. Um, and we also um, last year will continue this year to support the industry in other ways. So, for example, you know, we gave um, a lot of support to MPI membership and site membership last year by donating into their foundations to support those members who needed assistance and financial assistance um, to renew their memberships or have new memberships. And so we're really um, delighted that we were able to help many hundreds of people in the industry to retain that community and that connection and those learning um, opportunities. So we're going to keep doing that and keep focusing on our company values uh, and making sure we're living up to those in every way that we can during this year. Absolutely. I know I can't wait to get back to IMAX America. It's going to be an amazing time when we're all back together. Um, one trend I know that we've been really loving both in the office and, and sort of in the world right now is the idea of micro experiences and the power of like-minded tribes. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about why that's a commitment for IMAX this year? 
Yeah, I think interestingly, you know, we've always focused and one of our strategic priorities is around personalization. Um, and so, you know, if I look at our hosted buyer program, it is actually made up of hundreds of little micro experiences, really, where you're getting groups of 10 or 20 people coming together in a group to attend the show and they have a micro experience and a personalized experience as they experience this large kind of mega trade show. So it's always been in our DNA to work work like that. I think this year or this past year in particular, people have really needed to come together. And what we've noticed, certainly, I'm sure others have as well, is when you get online, if you get online with hundreds or thousands of people, it can create a special vibe, but it's difficult to connect with people. And so I think one of the things we really are focused on this year is how do we help people truly connect to peers or connect from a business um, perspective? perspective and so we're really looking at what those micro experiences might mean both digitally and then in our live shows going forward really help people both develop um, the connections get new connections but really um, get them out of their individual locations and houses and help them in the best way that is possible right now um, to really have those sort of micro tribes and, and find their place and I think People need that at the moment, um, you know, because loneliness, mental health is an issue right across the world. So I think this is um, more important than ever. Absolutely. And it's something actually we've been doing in our, in our internal team as well. We worked on our engagement this year to try to keep people connected. And one of the things I've loved the most is sort of those kind of micro tribes that we've built within the company around IMEX books and IMEX cooks. And last week we had a big conversation in IMEX gardening about was it too late to plant for spring? And I haven't planted yet, so I really appreciated that that uh, conversation. So no, I think it's, a, it's an amazing trend and, and something I'm looking forward to exploring more. So during Planet IMAX um, last year, Robert Dunsmore called for extreme creativity and design to craft better online experiences. And I love that concept. So what does that mean for IMAX? Yeah, you know, we really loved his session. And I think um, as a team, uh, we watched it many times and really, really took a lot from it. And I think it gave us the the uh, sort of ability or bravery, if you like, to think, you know, how can we do this next year? Do we need to just repeat and incrementally improve what we've done before, which was one option, you know, take Planet IMX and then just improve upon it? Or do we want to sort of break this down again and say, what does digital mean in 2021? Is that the same as 2020? Um, how can we really help people connect? What is it that they really want? And so so that sort of extreme creativity is something that we've really taken to heart and we've been um you know we've we've we deliberately at the moment just taking a, a pause taking a step back to really think through those things talk to our stakeholders the buyers the suppliers what do they need this year from us what do they want what what are the what are their issues and how can we help them to deliver that um I think The Economist um, called 2021 the year of luck and taking chance. So that's the other thing. We really thought, well, we don't need to just do the same thing and improve. That's going to be easy option. But why don't we experiment with the industry and on behalf of the industry? Because any experiments we do, anybody in the industry can learn from. And we're happy to share that. So we really want to both try to um, improve what we were doing, do it differently, experiment, and just share share those learnings. Um, we can't do an online world exactly what we do in the real life world. You know, a trade show doesn't translate exactly into digital. So we just thought, why not? why not just try to do something a bit different, but goes to the essence of creating connections, bringing learning, um, bringing inspiration. So we're taking those essences and saying, how can we do that in different ways online? And let's try and let's experiment together. And, and I think if you do it with that in mind, then you can only win because even something that doesn't work is a learning and we can all improve from that. And that's really what we want to do this year. I heard a quote during PCMA that um, 
that 2020 was the year for, or 2020 was the year for the unicorn and 2021 is the year for the phoenix and the idea around it is that the phoenix are going to be the companies that currently exist but are always innovating to see where they fit into this ever changing world rather than just starting fresh again and i i kind of love that idea of sort of how are we going to reinvent ourselves and and i think it's perfect for for what imex is focused on this year yeah absolutely i remember that session and um and, and that was a really great session and the other um quote uh, that really Really sticks in my mind from PCMA was the one that I think it said, you know, um, if you um, if you're feeling comfortable, you're not going fast enough. And um, I thought, well, you know, there was many instances last year where we didn't feel comfortable. We were going very fast. So uh, that really resonated with me. I love that. And I think even now I've had a lot of conversations this week as we work towards this 12 commitments for the year. And one of the things I love the most about IMAX actually is the fact that I think we're always going very fast, but that it really works for what we're looking to do um, because it does just spark so much creativity and also joy as we move forward. So um, it's a nice space to be right now. Um, so another one of our commitments is actually around our 2020 talking point, which was nature. Um, and this year, I love the idea that we're actually focused on it being nature positive, or it kind of looks like a nature plus sign when you read it. Um, and we're combining that talking point of nature and our regenerative revolution research, research report. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and what that means for us moving forward? Yeah, I think, you know, the research report that we did last year uh, was uh, amazing. I mean, there's just so much in there. And I think it caused us and our team to really think about, well, how do we apply that to us as well? So we've done this report for the industry, but we, we always want to walk the talk as much as we possibly can. So we've taken that, you know, our green squad obviously works with our consultants and with our suppliers on site. So they're really looking at how can they apply those principles of regeneration to um, how we actually operate the shows when we do come back live. Um, we've also looked at all the UN SDGs and we've picked out um, a, a number of those that we can really use and align with um, to uh, when we're implementing our actions at the live shows and obviously um, in our office operations as well. And, um, you know, the other thing I think is that with COVID, with all the safety measures, there's so much um, single use plastic that's come out. Um, and so we're really um, trying to look at uh, COVID safe um, materials that don't use so much single use plastic, um, that are recyclable. Uh, and we'd, we'd love to sort of work with people who are producing those so that we can both use them, but also showcase them to the industry as well. Um, and so, yeah, I think all of these things, sustainability is kind of at our heart, but it's how we take it to the next step, which is, as you say, nature positive is a really nice way of sort of including all these principles. But in that report, it was about more than just reducing your impact. It was about actually becoming uh, regenerative and circular in our actions um, and materials that we use. So, uh, you know, we won't do that in one year, but that's really what we're going towards and we're setting up some you know long-term goals that hopefully um, can get us there in the future. I think also um, one part of that is, is working with our exhibitors as well. And I think that's what I'm really excited about. Um, you know, working on the, the digital side at IMAX, getting to maybe look at some of our exhibitors who are exploring how to regenerate their kind of, as we call them, magical places and spaces all throughout the world. And I think that's going to be a really fun project for us because um, we miss our exhibitors, don't we? We miss our attendees and we miss all of the suppliers. So I'm looking forward to that, that side of, of Nature Positive as well. Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, one of our pillars of uh, nature in 2020 was magical places and spaces. And we had a lot of plans for that at the live shows. Uh, so obviously, we weren't able to fulfill all of those. So I think 21 does give us that opportunity to really feature the magical places and spaces right across the world that are um, all of our exhibitors. And so we're really excited about that as well. That's going to be a really fun one. Um, a few years ago, uh, we started our diversity and inclusion squad within the IMAX team and living our values of diversity, inclusion, equity and accessibility is our fifth commitment. So could you talk about what we're doing a little bit internally and externally to achieve this goal? 
Yeah, so we, uh, like our green squad, we have a diversity and inclusion squad uh, made up of a number of members of the team from right across the business. Um, they're actually finalising at the moment a five-year strategy plan. And it really does, for us, incorporate everything from our recruitment practices um, right through to how we operate um, internally and then through to the live shows. I think accessibility is really important. We've all learned a lot about about that um, this year uh, and the importance of that and certainly at the shows that's incredibly important um, and so you know at the end of the day diversity inclusion is so broad what we're trying to do really is look at all the areas that we can focus on um, first uh, and and really have an impact on of course we have programs like she means business and we'll also be working on that this year um, that's really focusing around um, uh, women's leadership um, but there are so many other areas um, of diversity and inclusion and even simple things like looking at our speaker roster looking at how we promote our shows, really making sure that um, we make an effort to include all those various diverse groups and that they feel um, welcomed to come to our shows and welcome them when they're there on site. I think those are really important. A lot of barriers actually in the online world can be broken down. So we must make sure that when we come back, we don't inadvertently put them back up. Um, and there are a lot of industry initiatives that are taking place as well that we will um, play our part in um, as, as much as we possibly can. Absolutely. I think it's so important. And I'm, I'm really proud that we offer that opportunity both internally with our diversity inclusion squad to be involved in our in our long term goals of IMEX as well. So I'm excited to see what what the team is going to accomplish this year. Um, let's talk about the analog moments, the moments that made us step away from our screens this year and kind of what we're looking towards this next year as we are able to start coming together again. So I know for myself, I, I kind of started a little hobby of flower pressing, which didn't last very long, but I felt proud of myself. Um, I know other people on the team found a love for jigsaw puzzles and many, many people made sourdough bread. Um, but these analog moments have connected us to communities, both on screen and off, and those communities shared our values even even though we felt so far apart for so long. So what do analog moments mean to you and what do they mean to IMEX? Yeah, I mean, I think it's great. I love the word analog moments. Um, and in a way, you know, that's what we all do as event professionals. We provide those analog moments. We provide those experiences for people to come together and share, which is so important. And for me personally, I was able to, at the beginning of the first lockdown, I uh, sort of retook up the piano after 25 years, which was fantastic. And it has waned and gone up and down. I'll admit that, but it's been really lovely to do that. I've done lots of baking. Um, so I've really enjoyed doing that. My my uh, kids have enjoyed that as well. We did a, a bit of DIY. We kind of rebuilt our deck, and and I took part in that, and that was great. Actually, I really enjoyed. It was a real uh, certainly in the summer. It was lovely. You know, put some music on, put a podcast on, or an audio book, and um, really sort of take took you away from that online world. Um, so, you know, I think it's so important and, and just being outside in nature in the, whatever weather you're living through right now. Um, and certainly it's pretty cold here, but still just getting out or getting out um, to exercise. You know, I, I went for a run not every day, just, you know, maybe a couple of times a week, but just getting myself outside the house and being able to run around the field. I, I find that really um, valuable. So I think these things are so important important it does connect you and I mean the other thing that I found is um, being involved in online events where they send you something in advance and then you participate in something together even if it's um, making a cocktail or uh, just anything simple like that does um, improve your commitment levels to go and make just just create that sort of uh, fun at the beginning of, of an event it really makes me think about that experience and you know whatever event you're doing whether it's digital or whether it's um you know in real life you've got to think through the design of the event and creating that experience and and that's what we as event planners know how to do so that's what we really that's the space we really need to occupy I think Absolutely. And I think people are missing those analog moments. I love the term as well. And I know I'm missing them. So I'm really looking forward to getting back together again. So 
Well, our intention in sharing our hopes and commitments for the year ahead is that the industry knows it can count on us to be there every step of the recovery road ahead. We hope we inspire others to do the same. Grounding yourself with your purpose and core values can be a huge support during challenging times. So look out for part two of this interview and the blog. We'll be delving into our further commitments around better tech experiences, wellness, the circular economy, and purposeful planning for IMAX America later this year. Thanks, Karina. It was really nice to spend this time with you. Thanks, Suzanne.